I'm counting. I'm counting eight. Am I right? One, two, three, four, four uh, five, six, six, seven, eight. Yeah, yes, we have. You got a quorum. You should go. Yep. Okay. Good. Good morning, everyone. This is a December 9th meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee, and I. As always, thank everyone for getting up early to join us. Um, because we're conducting this meeting by Zoom virtually, I need to make sure everyone can see and be heard. So I'm gonna call on the names of the committee members as I see them on my screen. Mike. Present. Sean. Present. Jonathan. Here. Tammy. Here. I hate Kimmy. Rupert. Yep, I'm here. Angelica. Here. And Simone. Here. As other people join, I'll, I'll double check with them. And Paul will not be with us this morning, um, I think for any of the meeting, because we managed to double book his calendar. Um, I see Ben is just logged on. Ben, I just want to make sure you can hear and be heard. And Rupert. I'm you're not good. here. You're good. And Rupert? I think that was Rupert. <laughs> that was that was Rupert. So Ben, ben and Rupert. It's, it, I see. Sorry. I, now you can see my lips move. Okay. <laughs> I can see your lips move. And I see Ben is nodding his head. So I'm here. We are officially. Um, on and we are recording. I remember to hit the recording. I'm going to turn it over to Margaret. Um, we have a pretty simple agenda this morning, but I think we're going to first, well, Margaret, you can show the agenda, but one of the things we want to make sure everyone does is get yeah. uh, meetings on their we calendars. Have, we have disabled the screen sharing again. Oh, okay. So I enable. Let's I just, see. all right, you should be able to do it now. Okay. Great. Thank you, Sean. Okay. So um, let me just sort of talk about the agenda. So there are some design updates, but what we're going to actually going to start with, I think, is talking about, um, we're going to start with design updates and the cost estimate documents. But I am also going to give an update on our meetings uh, going forward. So um, that is, and we've got as part of this committee, committee meeting date piece, we've laid out some tentative dates for uh, committee forums and school committee updates and updates to council that are all embedded in that. So, um, but I think um, as Kathy has laid out here, we're gonna start with the design updates and we do have one invoice to review. Okay, and before we turn it over to Dinesco, I just, when Margaret goes through the dates, we will send you everything she is showing, because this is a change in both January and February meetings um, to make sure we have plenty of time when we get the test cost estimates back. So I just want to make sure everyone gets their January and February. Those are going to be pretty important dates to make sure you have on your calendar. So I am turning it over to the Dinesco team. Um, I think I'm gonna be uh, doing most of the talking for the first part of this. Um, so what I'm gonna show you today, um, hopefully everyone uh, was able to look in some part at the documents that we posted Tuesday. So it's the drawing set and the basis of design and then Today, I'm going to, just going to go through some of the materials, uh, versions of what you've seen before, videos and, and plans that just point out where things are relevant to the drawings, where things have changed ever so slightly, and where we're looking at uh, doing alternates uh, for the sake of uh, controlling costs. And then uh, we'll talk about briefly meeting uh, the energy code that will be in effect by the time this is under construction and permitted. Uh, first of all. So I'm going to quickly go through the plans and point out some very minor changes, and then we can get into the videos where we can see where there's actual effects of the things that we're doing. Um, the site plan, no real changes since you've last seen it, but if you have looked at the documents, uh, 
our landscape architect Bill Brown has uh, documented and called out the materials in detail for all of the areas that you see on the site, the playground materials, the classrooms, um, all of the paving. Um, and, you know, that will be very important for getting the cost estimate at the level that we need. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just, I'm not the owner of this meeting, but I know um, we have uh, Alicia, who's a committee member, is in the attendees, not the panelists. So if someone could let her in. Thank so you. Flex us. Thank you. I just Sorry, saw that, Tim. Mike. No, yes, that's great, Mike. I, I just so uh, Alicia, I promoted you to panelists. Can you just make sure we can hear you and be heard? You should be in the room. I think I did that right, Sean. She's in the room, but I don't know if she can hear you. Do you want to ask her again? So, Alicia, just um, you're showing up as on, in the room with us. So, can you just uh, turn your mic on and let us know whether you can hear and hear us, and we can hear you. Oh. Okay, let's let's keep going, and then and then Alicia, if uh, uh, let's see, I don't know if you all can hear me. I'm having some issue with my audio. We can no, hear you. No, we, we can hear you fine. That works fine. Thank you. Okay, Tim. Thank you. Um, moving into the building, there have been. A few minor plan tweaks, but nothing that will affect the uh, experience of the building user or that you will actually ever see. We've adjusted some closets in the service area. Now that we understand where the generator will be on site and how power will get into the building, we've made the stairs a little bit wider as we finalize the area of the building to get more light into the common areas and, and just to make the stairs more comfortable. Um, the changes to the stairs um, go up through the building. Other than that, we've just been tweaking and moving some mechanical closets around as we coordinate with our engineers. Um, and then on the third floor, we've uh, reconfigured uh, to tidy up the mechanical room and the main electrical room and make the stair a little bit bigger to get more light down into the building, into the lobby from this main stair that will go outside the gym and the cafeteria. And then the... Uh, approach that we're taking in terms of being able to control the cost. Um, all of the uh, exterior materials that we've talked about in the past, the porcelain rain screen system, um, the ground face CMU that we might use for the lighter masonry material at the top of the building, those will be sent to the cost estimators as alternates so that we can interchange as we get the pricing back. We've also asked for an alternate for the accent color panels next to the windows that we could either do in the um, glazed CMU, which we have shown you, which has a very vibrant color. And there's also an option to do it in a single skin metal panel, uh, which also gives you a very wide range of custom colors, which are available. And then in terms of energy conservation measures that we will have in our pocket uh, just to make sure that we are hitting the EUI and the energy performance of the building that will be required under the 10th edition of the code that will be in effect before we are going out to permit. Um, we are going to do an alternate where all windows in the basis of design are standard double pane. We are going to do an alternate for a triple pane window. We will also do an alternate for heat mirror, we're calling it. It's, it's the trade name, but it's essentially a triple pane window, but the center a uh, pane of glass is a mylar film rather than glass, so it's uh, a bit more cost effective than triple pane, but performs similarly. Um, we are also going to do an alternate for under slab insulation, uh, which is not required by code and by current modeling we don't need. Uh, but due to some intricacies of how energy conservation and energy use is calculated in the new code. Uh, there's just a little bit of wiggle room that should be resolved um, in the next month or two with Thornton Tomasetti, and we just want to make sure that we have the flexibility uh, 
to meet that challenge if it arises. Um, and then that last bullet point is also about we might have to adjust the amount of insulation in the walls and the roof. What we're currently modeling and what we have in the basis of design, the R25 walls and the R40 roof, we, we think that will meet the code, but uh, we just want to confirm. So we just want to have that out there. And then I'm going to switch to some videos that just show um, what we've been working on and where the effects are. One second. I, I, um, as you go to those, Tim, I see that both Phoebe and um, Allison have joined us. And uh, can you, Phoebe, can you hear us? I just want to make sure to do a voice check. Yes, thank you. And Allison? Yes, I can. Thank you. So here's a video that you've seen before walking in the lobby and through the main vestibule, going straight to the office. Um, all of the changes in here are not to materials that they're actually to, um, and you'll see as you walk around uh, some minor things, we're adjusting the um, proportions of the window to make sure that uh, the clear story is clear of snow and rain, but uh, we've actually moved the roof down rather than remove any glass, which you're seeing up to the upper left, and you'll see better as we turn around. Um, as you look into that main stair, it's actually flipped 180 degrees. Uh, the stair used to be on, the upside used to be on the left, now it's on the right. This actually, as you go up through the building, will allow a little bit more light to come through. Uh, as the open side of the stair will be against the windows upstairs. Um, the changes that I'm talking about are at that level of subtlety. Um, most of the things that you have seen uh, are here and remain. And as you've come to expect, th that is what's going to be priced. Tim, so I don't know if you want to just quickly maybe pause for a sec and just um, talk about the materials and as it relates to the base of design. Sure. Um, we are doing, uh, just starting from the floor and going up, we are doing uh, linoleum essentially everywhere other than in the gym, uh, the platform that you're looking at right now, tile in the bathrooms, tile in the kitchen. Um, the, some of the finishes that we've talked about in the past, uh, wainscot tile and wood paneling in the public spaces with tack boards and marker boards. Um, accent panels and rooms for art or room for art uh, at selected locations in the building here. You're looking back towards uh, the lobby that's outside the stair and the elevator and then circling around back to the front of the building. You have a wood veneer panel accent and glass into the music practice area. Sound absorbing panels on the ceiling and glass into the administration area. Um, this finish that you can see in the lobby is the exterior masonry material turning into the building to bring things together. Uh, the finishes that we spec are all durable, stand up to time, uh, and are cost effective uh, in our experience for uh, you know giving you the performance that you need for a school, which is uh, obviously a highly trafficked I'll say abused uh, type of building. Uh, there are a few more videos in the library in the project areas, and then we'll get to the outside. Um, just give me a second, because they're separate videos. I see Allison's hand is up. Allison? I think this is a simple question. Are there sound absorbing panels in the cafeteria? I'm gonna go back to the cafeteria in one second. So the answer is yes. And I will show you where they are. Um, it's very hard to see uh, with the glare here, but all of the ceiling, um, in the center area where it's a bit higher has a ceiling that has panels uh, that are sound absorbing. And then where you don't have that, you have a standard um, 
actually it's a high performing lay-in acoustic ceiling. Um, and then on the platform itself, you have sound absorbing drapes and there will be panels to the right. Uh, all of that is because there are a lot of hard surfaces. There's glass on the exterior against the corridor and the floor is hard, which will cause reverberation. So to account for all that, there are sound absorbing because we know how cafeterias can be loud. Jonathan, yeah, thank. I see Jonathan's hand is up also. Yeah, it's just a similar question uh, regarding the gymnasium. Is presumably you've got some sort of sound absorption in there as well. Uh, the colorful pads above the CMU are called out as uh, painted tectum, so those are sort of panels, and then the roof deck itself is an acoustic deck, and. Uh, to an extent, the uh, crash padding also provides, but you do have a similar uh, issue, uh, you know, with with the gym floor, the, the extent that it is CMU, you have a lot of reverberant surfaces, but we do have tectum, acoustic deck, and wall pads in there to deaden the sound. Any other questions on this? Next, I'm going to go to the project area. So here um, we're starting in the corridor, moving toward the east end of the building. Um, when we get outside, and it has, has been shown before, uh, the end of the corridor is completely glass for letting light in and wayfinding here. We are turning into the project areas. You can see the transom above the lockers and storage that will allow a, a lighted ceiling and a feeling of daylight to get into the project area. Uh, this time we have the doors open so you can see into the classroom. Um, but there are lockers for every individual student within the project area, um, storage above for the teachers. Um, space for pull-out learning in the project area itself. And currently we're showing mill work with a, a whiteboard and a little seating area. Uh, the ceiling elements uh, are visible as you're walking down the hall, but we've um, basically kept them not solid uh, sort of uh, woven like to allow more daylight into the project area space and then there's just one more project area view so tim um mm -hmm. i'm just going to ask as you're getting the other one on for the classrooms for the furniture for whether there is a um a, a screen on the wall and where it's located. That's all in the design specs now, but it's flexible in terms of, it, I'm asking statement as a question also, exactly what the chairs will be, exactly what the furniture will be, exactly which wall, if if people want a white, you know, to, to do um, features. So that can be decided later. So it's in the specs in terms of the expense for it. It's in the specs in terms of the expense for it. Um, the chairs will be decided later. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say that there's going to be individual flexibility on a room by room basis for where the whiteboard will be, uh, but where that is um, in terms of the total design, um, there's still time to talk about that. But we have a pretty good idea where it should be for systems, for millwork, for the for the relationship of the teaching wall to the door. Um, this project area view actually starts in a classroom looking out the windows and then turning around to see the project area. So you can see that the teaching wall was on your left um, as you walk in. Uh, classroom chairs, this is tables, but it could be desks. Um, the uh, movable storage wall to the back. Here is the amount of windows that you will have in each room. And this is um, allows us to get to that 22% that will allow the building perform. Um, 
we had to make a few reductions in glazing area in, in other parts of the building to hit that 22%, which is something we'll mention when we get to the outside, but we have kept what we have been showing along all along in the classrooms, in the library, and in the cafeteria and the lobby, because we know that, you know, those spaces that are, you know, used every day by the students and used most importantly, we wanted to make sure that was there. So we removed a little glass in the gym, a little bit in the admin, but we can get to that when we get outside. Kathy, um, Tim, if you could just pause, go. Mm -hmm. If you could just go back in this classroom, thanks. I, just, just to clarify, the furniture and technology are not in the base construction budget. Uh, what we're doing is those are separate, um, separate line items for MSBA. It's part of the soft cost. And what we're doing is we're getting those priced out now based on our conversations with uh, the school department. Uh, both for technology and for furniture and equipment. And we should have those by um, the end of the year as well. So we'll have those before our, as part of the total project cost, because that's what's important to the town. Uh, as far as technology, uh, that has not 100% been decided. And so what we're doing is we're looking at the different costs as far as what the projection on in a classroom is going to look like, whether it's going to be an interactive projector, whether it's going to be flat panel t, uh, screens, I don't want to say TVs, flat interactive flat panels. So we're working with Jerry and the school department on those features. So I just want to make sure everyone knows you're not going to see a line item for some of those things in the cost estimate. Um, items that will be included in the cost estimate is the sound uh, the PA system, which will also, as part of that, which will be built into the ceiling, will include a, a sound system for the staff. Uh, the It's called um, Top Cat system. It's a sound reinforcement system that will be included as part of the base contract. The teacher can wear a lapel and uh, amplify her voice or his voice instead of having to yell, that will be included in the base contract. Um, I see Tammy's hand is up also, Donna, thank yeah, you. Yeah. I just um, I just had a question in regards to the, the tables or desks that I see. I really like that they're individual and can be moved around. Do we know if those or whatever desks that will be in the classroom could be raised? I know that um, there are some students, particularly in fourth, fifth grade, that like to stand to have a standing desk. It's just a yeah. sure, sure. Um, so where we left off with the um, FF and E discussion was the lower grades would have tables, the high, the older upper grades would have desks. Uh, every Every classroom will have a stand, a standing desk. Tammy, some some of the younger grades can those can be adjustable. The fifth graders we're going to have to purchase a separate standing desk just because of the size of the fifth graders. But um, so based on the feedback that we've had, and we can walk through it, the furniture and equipment. You know, it's really that we need to know now. We need to include it in the budget and make sure that it's accounted for, but we will start having really detailed conversations about exactly uh, the color, the type, the um, book. I'm seeing that we have the um, bookshelves under the desk, whether that's, that's preferred, not preferred. We'll get into all of that detail later in the design because uh, products, manufacturers change their furniture um, on, a, on an annual basis. And we'll just make sure that we have the latest as we start going out to bid for it. Angelica. Uh, yeah, my question is along the same lines as Tammy. And I know that the, the specifics of the design choices will come later, but it is related to cost because um, I am also thinking about the choice of chairs as it uh, applies for students with disabilities and making sure that some of the challenges we've had in previous uh, 
furniture choices, say in the cafeteria, really affected the ability of students with disabilities to be included because for instance, chairs couldn't be raised or they were attached to, to sort of like the, they were already attached to furniture. So it would be nice to be able to see ahead of time some of those choices and get some input from the folks um, uh, in the uh, special ed office to make sure that the costs are included for things that um, may be put in each classroom that can better include students with disability. Thank you. Yeah, we will, we will, Angelica. It, it goes everywhere from the types of seats um, and, and the flexibility of those seats um, all the way to the standing desks if preferred. In the cafeteria, of course, we will make sure that there's sufficient space for handicapped students that that need to sit at the table and won't won't fit in a seat and things like that but um a lot of the special educators will be very helpful especially as it relates to the ilc program to weigh in to a lot of these choices so thank you if I could just quickly follow up, but it's not just about the ILC because part of the interest in the school is that it's going to allow us to deal with some things that we have been challenging in the past about including students with disabilities across. And that was one of the things about the, the design of it being like, for instance, several stories because it allows us to really better integrate and not have the separations that we've had architecturally in place in the past. So I just want to make a plug for talking not just in terms of the ILC, but all students and students have also um, not just students with intensive needs, but students uh, with autism, different sensory concerns, need sensory equipment in classrooms. And that's the way of the future. That's the way a lot of the schools are, are moving towards to include so in the budget some of that sensory equipment and get feedback. I'm not a, I'm not a design sensory expert, but that will also benefit all students and that is additional cost. And so it's better and I'm happy to also, you know, um, you know, if we can get that information ahead of time, I would love to look at what might be the possibilities and get from the folks um, in special ed educators and the PT, the physical therapist, mm -hmm. to get their input on what equipment might be best because it would be a good investment to go ahead and have that equipment rather than depend on each kid's IEP to request that equipment and have to fight for that equipment because it's just, we can just institute it now. Right, and and thank you. And I, I, I was referring to the ILC just only because they, really have special needs and, and they've been great advocates, but, but we do um, include, and the PT folks are really important when we start making decisions on the type of chair or options on chairs, whether they're um, what we call um, hockey chairs where the kids can move around and, and have um, kids that, that, can't sit still in the standing desk is another example. Equipment's a different conversation, um, but the furniture itself, uh, we have we will have a, a good handle on that as as we present the budget in at the beginning of the year. And those conversations again can continue and um, be refined as as we move forward. So I, we, we hear you. I, I just want to make sure that we fully understand that need. Um, just going to continue uh, moving out of the classroom. Here's the view of the project area from the classroom side. As you walk into the corridor, you can see the whiteboard that we currently show in the millwork, little sitting areas. Um, and then this is the view across the hall. Um, you can see the doors with the wide side lights, the transom glass, um, all of which is an attempt to bring the exterior light into the building and these project areas, which are going to be the hub of activity for these grades. Um, Danisco team, I just want to say, um, having watched you know seen a lot of these presentations and i i want to say to the committee i think that we haven't had as much chance as we would like to to talk here in the committee about the detailed design of the classrooms but i think they've done a really great job and i want to thank them for their effort there's a kind of theory of classroom design which is behind a lot of what you're seeing and maybe when we get into the next phase we can talk about that in a little more detail so um, i think it's really well done 
Um, with that, we're going to go to a quick view of the Media Center. Uh, this is walking in the media center door. You'll see the circulation desk and the librarian's book room there. Um, as I mentioned, we've maintained the amount of glazing uh, in the library, looking out to the fields to the north. Um, the layout is, as you saw last week, there's a group learning area in the corner of the library, stacks around. Uh, looking to the other corner of the library in front of the teacher's workroom, I should say library and workroom, there's a storytelling area defined with soft seating, uh, the circulation desk. And then as you look back at the entrance to the library that we are showing a glass wall and across the corridor is a glass stair that will connect to the lobby, the third floor, and there will be light coming in from the windows above. Tim, the book cases in the middle of the floor, part of basic services, part of the construction, or part yes. of the F&A. Okay. So that's that's a big differentiator um, right now is that all of the bookshelves are incorporated as part of the construction budget, as opposed to having the built-ins along the perimeter be part of the construction budget and then the movable stacks in the center of the library would be part of ff &A. So um, that too, we can put on a list if needed as, as part of value engineering, but that only increases you know, the cost at the other side. But it's just something to note that you will see a significant amount of um, shelving in the cost estimate. Tammy. Tammy, sorry. All right, now, can you just look at the instructional area in the library? I just want to make sure that there's, is there uh, going to so, be technology there too? The, that would be, okay, I just didn't yeah. see it. All right. So uh, granted, you're looking at it obliquely. It's against this wall. There is a break in the shelving there. And then just, um, it, it's there to capture cost and the amount of seats and the technology. There's a, a pretty good argument that it probably wants to be over where the storytelling area is just because you know, surrounded by windows and projection uh, and distraction is is maybe not the best thing. Uh, and the storytelling area might rather be here. But uh, all of that is yet to be finalized. And, and we hope to have a, you know, a very in-depth discussion about how this library in detail is going to work. Uh, Phoebe, you have your hand up? Um, so Donna, your uh, your what you just said made me just have kind of an overarching question. Um, in terms of when we get the cost estimate, the detailed cost estimates back, um, do we go through that all together, like um, in in significant detail, to figure out what's included there, what you know, what's not, all of that kind of stuff? Well, we'll have two estimates, Phoebe, and both will be 50, 60 pages long. So um, the intent is not to do a page turner. Um, <clears throat> what what uh, there will be a summary uh, sheet, which might be helpful that will break it down by division is what they're called in the construction world. Um, so, Meaning we'll say, okay, this is mechanical, this is fire protection, this is plumbing, uh, here are um, what the paint is, what the different materials are based on divisions. And we can go through that. And that's why we're kind of letting you know now, as we're going through this, this is, these are the materials that are included in the cost estimate, but we can have these videos as well when we can go through a high level review of the cost estimates, and then we can get into the weeds if, in certain areas if, if there's a, a desire for that. But, but uh, we, the, you, the, you, can schedule, you could schedule a whole day if we needed to go through it in detail. The written basis of design is also probably the most user-friendly 
way to read what is represented in the cost estimate because it describes the systems that are included in the cost estimate is use that in lieu of a specific uh, technical specification to to develop their estimates and that's what we're looking what you've sent us rick is is correct it's for them and for us thank you sean i see sean's hand is up Thanks, Kathy. Uh, two questions. Tim, you probably already answered this and I just missed it. Um, what's the flooring in this room? In the library is carpet, and that's the only building in the room with carpet. Okay. Yeah. You probably room heard room. you've probably heard some of our carpet tear out <laughs> stories. Okay. So, um, and then the second question related to Phoebe's uh previous one. Um, if people are interested, are they able to attend the cost reconciliation meeting just to sort of listen in to that process or is it um I, I've been invited to one for the library, a little bit smaller project. I didn't know if it was something that people could attend for the school, just just to hear sort of the back and forth conversation around that. Uh I'm gonna punt to Rick on it, but typically if the cost I, I'm gonna punt to to <laughs> maybe mark it on this. <laughs> yeah, this that one's coming to me. Um I I would say no. Um, because, but I do think um, we could have a, a kind of wrap up summary session um, mm -hmm. after it. I, I think, I mean, first of all, it's, it's often at this level, a three to four hour meeting, it's mm -hmm. really kind of like watching paint dry. Um, so I want to say it's, it's not the, and it, and it's highly technical. So I see Jonathan's got his hand up. So I would say no, but I think we could certainly arrange to have a summary. Yeah, Jonathan? and, and I, I think that's my understanding too of, of it. I just know some people have been interested in getting into sort of the those very fine details. So, um, but interested to hear what Jonathan has to say. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with Margaret. They, my, my experience has been they can be very long um, and they are very technical. Um, I think if if folks want to do a a deeper kind of understanding or exploration of of what's in the cost estimate, uh, I wonder if there's a, a way to um, you know to to have kind of a deeper kind of review of the the basis of design, uh, because like Rick, I think that's that's where the meat of what's going into this estimate is, um, and if um, you know folks want to 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 more fully understand, it, I think that would be the place to start. Um, but but um, but maybe Phoebe, if 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 there's more to your question about uh, you know understanding the estimates, um, it would be good to under, understand your question more if, if we're misunderstanding. I I don't think I don't think there's a, a misunderstanding. I think I'm just trying to. Um, put all the pieces together. And so we have this, you know, ginormous document that we just got um, that I'm um, doing my best to get through. Um, and it would be, it, it would be very interesting. And I think um, to try to be <laughs> diplomatic, I think it would be good for the town that we live in to really understand the correlation. And in order to understand the correlation between this document that we have and the document that's going to this being the document that is going to ultimately um, have a direct reflection on our costs, what materials are being used, what materials, you know, people are coming back to us and saying, um, you know, this is how much this is going to cost for this thing that you've given us. Um, I think I was just trying to figure out how much of that detail do we all get to hear, see, you know, really get a feeling of. So that's where my question was coming from. Like, how, like how much of the pieces are we going to put together as a group in the public eye? Um, that's kind of where I was coming from, if that makes sense. Yeah. So Phoebe, the base of design, yes, that enormous document and and it will get bigger um as the project progresses um but but the that that basis of design is what the cost estimators are basing their estimates on so so if 
you know, I think maybe it might be helpful to understand. Okay, so so just so for everyone to understand the cost estimating reconciliation, it's going to be two cost estimators. We're all going to sit in a room. They have the basis of design. They know there's carpet in the media center. There's no. They know that there's uh, linoleum in the in, on the floors. What the roof? All of that stuff. All the materials that are listed in the basis of design. They're going to sit there and say, "Hmm, is uh, the carpet worth?" $3.50 a square foot or $3.25 a square foot. That, that's the micro level that the cost estimates get into. It's not about, oh, is it vinyl tile or is it linoleum tile? They, they have the basis of design. So that, so, so when we say it's cost reconciliation, it's literally making sure that two independent cost estimators are making um, the right unit costs for all of the information or all of the detail that we've provided them. So, well, and, or the, and that they've got their quantities. Yeah. And so, the quantities. Donna, the, right. I apologize because I, I want to interrupt and suggest that we hold on this question till we get to the schedule that I'm going to talk about. Because as Jonathan says, and I think there's time, there is time um, once this process has been you know, once the sausage has been made and we the, the consultant team can present something, there is time to have a more detailed discussion beyond the building committee meeting. And so I'd like to just keep yeah, going with what Danisco is doing and yeah. come back and talk about it relative to schedule. And, okay, and, Donna says and, good. <laughs> uh, and, and I agree with that. And I just, as you get to the end, of this, um, what I think I heard Tim say at the very beginning when he was doing um, insulation and there's been code changes that you're grappling with, it sounds like you're gonna get, you're also pricing out some options. You could go this way or that way. Is that correct? That's what I heard Tim say. So we're gonna right. have, in addition to the, how much does the floor cost? We're gonna have, if we insulate this way, this is the insulation or the, the so we're gonna have some pieces um, which will add to the complexity, but I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, back to Tim. Okay. And Rick um, and Donna. <laughs> uh, we're gonna watch one final video of the exterior of the building. And this should look uh, much as it has before. Um, I mentioned that we there were some tweaks in the percentage of glass window to wall ratio to allow us to get to the 22% number that uh, our energy model is based on. Um, some of that reduction, uh, the if you have very good eyes, you'll notice that the punched openings, the windows at the administration suite are slightly narrower. Uh, they're still ample and you have clear story window coming in to the right of the lobby, but that is one of the decisions we made to get down to the number. Uh, the cafeteria and library as we sing around that glass has all been maintained. Um, and since we were just talking about alternates, this is a view where you can see one of the major pieces. So uh, the brick, the uh, Iron spot, the darker brick, um, is in the basis of design. Uh, we have alternates for the lighter masonry. Uh, we will cost out both uh, a porcelain rain screen panel and a uh, ground face CMU. Um, the glazing, as I mentioned, we will price out various options, be it the standard double pane or triple plane or heat mirror. Uh, the accent panels against all of the classroom windows, we will price those a couple of different ways so that, um, you know, when we get these costs back, depending on where we are, we can make the decisions that we need to to give you the project that you want. Um, in terms of that, there have been no real manipulations of the composition of the design, uh, just the glazing changes. There were some small windows here at the east end, not in the corridor, but in the offices that are here but it's a small um, 150 square foot office with a three foot wooded window that goes to the ceiling. It's actually very uh, generous in terms of daylight. Um, 
you'll see at the stairs, um, we've introduced some spandrel panels um, where the stair itself comes up against the glass and there was no light getting in anyway. Uh, that's one of the tweaks that will have minimal effect that allows us to get to the window to wall ratio. Um, is that a questioning hand, Margaret? I can't hear you. Can you just quickly explain what a spandrel panel is? Um, so uh, the curtain wall that is shown here at the stair, uh, it's a continuation of the curtain wall system, but it's an opaque um, window element rather than vision glass. And then behind that, there will be insulation, which will allow it to perform as any other part of the wall, uh, basically up to the R25 assembly. So it helps on the insulation and it hides the structure and other stuff behind it that you don't Absolutely. really want to see. Sorry. Correct. Uh, we've taken the same approach at the main stair in the center of the building that the kids getting off the bus will go up. Uh, right now it's shown as a spandrel panel within the curtain wall. We may color match uh, the panel around it. Uh, but that is one of the effects that are one of the tweaks that we made to the envelope. We also took a little bit of glass out of the gym, if you can see at the corner between the door and the clear story, which is still on the southeast and west side and still very generous. And we might even reduce that a little bit more just for glare. Uh, but those are the changes that we had to make to get the window to wall ratio down to 22%. And that is what is reflected in cost estimate and that is what uh, the assumptions were for the energy model uh, that gets us to the uh, 25 EUI target. Tim, can I ask in the gym, you know, given that it's south facing and has this glare issue, have you looked at the modeled or, or will you model the how the daylight uh, works in that room relative to uh, sports activities? Uh, yes, we will. We, we've encountered that before and we might, um, as we develop the design, we may move. Tinker. You may tinker. tinker. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Because, yeah. uh, you know, if you have a basket that you can't shoot at, it's... Right. Okay. Kathy? Um, in the in the cost estimates, um, did you have to specify the PV panels how many of them are going on the roof versus these um, standing platforms over? Is is that correct? I mean, I I haven't as you, th that will show that I didn't get to wherever that is in the document. Well, ac actually, that shows very well that you. Uh, so the the documents that we posted uh, are about fifty pages short of what we are going to be posting today. So we will send an updated copy. But uh, as I mentioned in the email that I sent to the committee, so fire protection, um, some of the electrical drawings were not there. And PV was also one of them. But actually, I have a drawing that I can share with you um, that shows that breakdown that will be incorporated in the documents. Um, one second. And the only reason I'm asking is that earlier on you said it's less ex anything we can put on the roof is less expensive than what we put over the parking lot. So that's that's true. And working with I'll solar design, that. we've identified a bit more PV area on the roof, which has allowed us to shift some out of the parking lot, which will have some effect on cost in reducing it. Uh, this is one iteration ago. There is one more canopy in the parking lot that will be added to this, but it is a little bit lower than we were carrying at PSR, uh, or I should say the total isn't lower. Some of the generating capacity has moved, which will hopefully have a beneficial effect on the overall cost. Thank you. Um, and so that 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 is what we are sending to the cost estimators today. And then we will be discussing, uh, as we mentioned, the numbers that we get back early in the year. So I wanna just add a, a follow-up question on the PV panel and the canopies. Um, when you give us a cost, I noticed sometimes the line for that was a different number 
than the line I saw in the sustainability. And it was just sometimes it had the design costs added onto it, and sometimes it was just the direct costs. Will we get that level just on breaking out? Um, and I'm asking more on, on thinking of where there might be federal credits, where there might be, you know, so not so much the total building, but being able to see that array that you have to design it, you have to buy the panels and you have to install it. Will we get uh, all those pieces so we can see that package? There, there will be a, a detailed breakdown of the PV, um, much like all of the other systems in the building. And since it is part of the project and not a separate contract to PPA, um, the same markups will, will, will be concluded like any other direct cost. I don't know if uh, Donna or Ricky want to well, add to that. Yeah, so so it it will go in. Um, we really don't want to, so it. There'll be a line item or multiple line items, but there, there'll be a section just for the solar, Kathy. It will be part of the direct cost. And then all of the contractor markups, design contingency, et cetera, will be applied to all of the direct costs. We can pull that out separately uh, for, for the benefit or give you those numbers for the benefit of any tax incentive that you're going after, if, if that's your question. That was right. my question. Yeah. And I guess my question, it's a question Margaret keeps carrying at the bottom of our minutes that um, let's assume this is all a go and, and you're now got the papers and you've got a, uh, an overall project manager does the project manager have to take on all of the PV panels or could you contract at that point since it's going to come later? I mean, the design has to be in your building. Could it come later? And it's it's not a question I need answered now. Um, it's just thinking about when we incur that expense, it, you know, we, it comes, well, none of we can't actually install them until the building is built and the, and the parking lot is in. But so, so it's, I don't need it all answered now, but it's, it's breaking that out potentially for the contracting that you're doing yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah, Emma, we, we could do it um, two ways, uh, you know, um, circling back to the town of Lexington, uh, what, what they've done for their recent um, couple of projects non-school projects is they obviously were carrying the cost, they're owning the systems, but what they did was they hired a separate um, contractor. And so they bid the PV separately. Uh, the site contractor was response, the, the you know, the main project site contractor was responsible for the conduit and um, maybe foundations for the PV canopies in the parking lot. So you need to coordinate it. But then another contractor came in after and and installed all of the PV. Okay. So, so, I just, so, yeah, so, so there my are question. different ways. Yeah, yeah. There are, so, there are options that we're going to there's discuss. That was my question. There's options. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I think that was exactly what I wanted to know. Thank you. Um, are there, I'm looking at the screen. Are there other questions, um, comments on all of this? Um, ben. That, that, was that, a, was a, that was an errant hand raise. Sorry about that. that. Was a, <laughs> but but did you want to ask what the floor of the gym is? Because I at least as, as far as I can see, we're carrying wood right now, correct? Yes. We are carrying wood. Okay, so that, that was the other question. And Margaret, I know this flows into when we get this back and uh, are staring at the numbers. Um, I heard Tim say quite quickly, but you had alerted this to us in a, a recent agenda that there's a new code that has likely imposed some costs depending on how strong. So maybe you could say a few words about 
that code change and the uncertainty. Um, then the second was, um, as you, when we see this package coming back with us as numbers, will you also be showing us a list of, um, uh, I don't like the, the call value management, but anyway, of potential areas, if you wanted to lower the costs at this early stage, that we will have some choices. So will we be getting a big package back on here's the current estimate and also should you want at this stage? Um, and I'm I'm partly asking, um, Phoebe, I don't know on the origin of yours, but I, I've shown, I've spoken publicly with the moving picture, but also just snapshot. And there's been an overwhelmingly positive response. People are thrilled with it. And the next question is, have you gone overboard on expenses? Is it too, is it, are you building a children's palace? You know, right. so- People look at it and it's like, it's so beautiful. It must be crazy expensive. Right, right. right. So I, I want to have, make sure we have answers on a, you know, the materials choices we've had. So, so that, that's the motivation for my question on what will we be seeing in January and where will we have choices? So the first is the code change, and the second is the level at which we will be discussing this in January. Uh, I can respond to the code change first. Um, the, the, the issue is that the way the energy consumption, or it's called a Teddy, the thermal energy demand intensity, um, which is going to be a requirement of the new code, um, it, it's calculated by formula and model, and they haven't published the guidelines on how the models are constructed yet. Uh, it, that should be coming out actually at the end of this month, and Thornton Thomas said, as soon as they come out, we'll be analyzing it. Uh, but since that procedure is not known yet, we, we, we don't know exactly what that procedure will yield. Uh, based on presentations by Paul Ormond at the DOER, we believe what we are specifying uh, will meet or is very close to meeting the new energy code, but we can't be certain without knowledge of how it will be calculated. And so that may require additional insulation. Uh, so that, that part. And then the other things that we are testing in terms of the envelope and energy performance are the different levels of glazing. As modeled, um, we are right at the 25 EUI, which is our target. Um, and uh, Thorne Thomas has, has already modeled a few of those, and those will bring us down to 24.8. Um, if they are extremely cost effective, that might be worth it as we. Um, you know, refined schedules or buying building use, we may want that flexibility to make sure that we get that uh, at 25 EUI, which is so important to the projects and its financing. Yeah, I, and I just to clarify for the committee, so there is a change, the, the nugget to take away from this, there is a change coming on at the first of the year that is still being, I would say, pressure tested. Um, it's a, It's going to put a bit much higher, it's changed the energy code. It's gonna put a lot of pressure on design teams like Danisco. And there is some indeterminacy right now about it. And so I think what's important to know is that they are doing their best to wrap their heads around and embed in the project cost, what those requirements are. But if we bring this back to the committee at a later date to say, there might, you know, good news, bad news could go either way. There, there's processing. This code hasn't been tested yet, so indeterminacy around that issue is probably the best way to understand it. And Jonathan, that must be hitting your projects too, correct? Yeah. yeah Jonathan. Yes. I mean, the 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 biggest difference is, um, you know, typically there is a what I'm going to call a concurrency period between codes, but this project is long enough and big enough that we're gonna to have to adapt to the new code because we will never go out to bid during that, that concurrency period. Um, and you know, just, just for more context, this is a good thing. You know, the state yeah, as a yeah. whole 
is moving towards the goals that Amherst has sort of adopted already. Um, they just may take some slightly different pathways um, and they'll take a much longer time, you know, and another, I'd like to think 10 years, most projects will be where Amherst is trying to be today. Um, it's just the pathway to that and, and how to demonstrate to the, to the code officials at the time we go for a permit that we've met both our um, requirements to the town and the requirements that the state is looking for. And it requires a highly, as Tim was saying, a highly technical analysis to figure out whether you're getting there. So any other questions on this piece? And just so as my understanding is after this meeting, you will be putting the final touches on this and then it goes to the cost estimators, correct? That is correct. Tim, the acronym for Teddy is? Thermal energy demand intensity, I believe. But what's the thermal? It's T E D I. Yeah. T -E -D -I. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, yeah. Just it's for my notes. Teddy bear. Just for my yeah. notes. Sure <laughs> it's not a teddy bear. It's not a teddy bear. It's a teddy bear, but it's not a teddy bear. No, they, they said they just thought that that would soften the, <laughs> the <laughs> crazy demand that this is going to require. Just sounded cute. Okay, so seeing none on this, Margaret, I think now we, we go to you for um, schedule. Yes, let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna sort of start at a bit of a high level and sort of drill down just to you know ground everybody in this what we're talking about. So um, can everybody see my funny little diagram? So this is kind of an overview. This is an overview of where we are right now. So um, we're about to hit the first beginning of 2023, which is, I think we'll all agree, freaking unbelievable. Um, the town council has voted to um, have the public debt exclusion vote uh, May 2nd. I haven't even put in the MSBA vote, but it happens a few days before that on April 26th. So what happens after that is there is a period of detailed design, there is the bidding of the project, and there are some construction documents, uh, sorry, construction, um, and then a period where the building is, the furnishings are being installed, the existing building is being demolished, and then the school is open uh, we hope for the fall of 2026. And when that school opens, then there is site work going on, wrapping up at the end of 2026 to take the where the existing building was and sort of put all the final site work in place. So that's kind of the overview of this. I'm gonna get into now um, another level of detail. The reason I wanted you to see all of this is we, I am about to put a version of this up on the site visit, uh, it's on the, on the website. So I just wanted you to sort of have a picture um, of this. Um, and so let's look at the, the, next, <laughs> the next level down. So what it means for the committee is, um, and now we're really just picking up in May. So the the vote has happened. Hopefully the vote is in the affirmative for the project. And now this detailed design period happens. So in the public facing schedule, I'm just showing this as a detailed design period. In fact, it's actually broken down into several phases. There are several submissions to the MSBA that occur. Um, this committee will not meet, need to meet as often. We're targeting probably a monthly meeting, maybe a couple times, it's gonna be every three weeks. So, um, and it will be sort of following along with what we've done. During um, the design development period, there's gonna be an opportunity in the beginning of 60% CDs, there's gonna be more in an opportunity for more community input. Um, and we'll be having some more meetings to present some of the detail 
that's going to be embedded in the cost estimate. Um, but we expect to be bidding the project in the summer of 2024. And I Rick, I don't know if you can remember. I think this is a, an eight, something like an 18 month uh, construction schedule. So um, yeah. now I'm going to pivot to what that means for the next uh, month or two. Whoops. I, I see Paul has joined us. Paul, can you, we just make sure we can hear you? Yes. And, hi there, Paul. Thank you. You're, you're just in time for marking your calendar. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so um, have I got the right screen up. Can everybody see if a page that says yes. January? I can see it. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk through the month of January and February for everybody. And I'm also, once this um, meeting is over, I will be updating your calendars to match this. So um, we are have reached a point where we do not meet, need to meet again in December, but in January, this is what will happen. So this cost estimate reconciliation that we talked about will be happening with the consultant teams um, the, first, the very end of the first week of January. Um, the following Tuesday, there's going to be a design presentation, a kind of high level design presentation to school committee, just to loop them in. Um, the budget numbers will be presented on Friday the 13th. Hopefully that's not a problem from, a <laughs> from uh, the perspective of people who are superstitious. But um, the following week, we are proposing that there be two community forums, one in the morning at 8.30 on the 18th, one in the evening on the 19th at 6.30. So following the pattern that we did before. And then those folks will, I mean, it, there's a lot to present at these forums. There's talking, looking at the design, helping people understand it. And then obviously there's the money. Um, the following Monday, the 23rd, there is a presentation targeted to council on the project. And then I'm suggesting that the committee meet again on Friday, the 27th, to discuss the community input that's been received in those meetings. Um, there is likely to be some further discussion of um, sort of final costs relative to alternates. We may be looking for input on, now that you've had a chance to understand some budget choices, you know, what act, action do you want to take on these? Kathy, I see your hand up. Yeah, I just want to, Margaret, um, the 13th meeting, um, it sounds like that will be a fairly intense meeting. It, it, it Should we potentially plan on more than a two-hour meeting? Or does the flexibility of we can come back and continue the conversation on the 27th mean that we can stick with two hours? I just... It, because it feels like there's going to be a lot to discuss when we get the numbers back, including some yeah. choices, the way Donesco mm -hmm. set it up, choices of materials, choices of going one way or the other. And I yeah. see I see Phoebe's hand is up also. That was my question. On, on so length the length answer of to that is I think it would be good to book it for longer, even if we don't need the time. Phoebe. Okay. Um, so in terms of this timeline, uh, how and when are we alerting people to the community forum? Um, I think this is a really good opportunity um, for us to practice, uh, you know, early and complete disclosure and um, really get people involved. Um, and I'm recognizing that, you know, this is just a little bit over a month away and we have uh, you know, kind of a major holiday for a lot of people coming in the middle of this. Um, and when, so when you guys are doing the cost estimate reconciliation the first week in January, when can we as the committee expect to see the information that comes back? Um, because if we have that one day on the 13th to really kind of have our questions or anything like that um, ready to go and be answered before it goes to kind of the full community. <laughs> yeah. um, I'd love to. I'd love to have some significant time to really 
attempt to go through a document that's clearly going to be um, substantial in depth and, you know, important. Okay, so let me take those questions separately. So relative to the community, um, if these dates seem satisfactory, the committee today, I'm going to ask Donna to have your, I'm blanking on your gentleman's name who made the flyers for us. Brian. Yeah, I, Brian. I also just sent him a note. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so he'll make a, a couple flyers for us and we can start, you know, sending them around, putting them, communicating them out to the community if those dates look good. Um, to your second question about when you will get the materials, I mean, I can promise you that you will see, receive them by the 11th. We'll certainly try to get them out sooner. Um, I'm I'm really reluctant to overcommit because I don't have a good sense of, right now of um, you know how much the level of complexity of what we want to present as recommended base project relative to the choices. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think and so. I, okay, and I see Kathy's hand up. Uh, yeah, Phoebe, I just wanted to you know we were testing these dates with, I think we also, Mike has double checked with Allison to make sure we're not meeting at a time when um, the school committee was meeting. But I, we were talking about potentially if we jointly post them um, to have Amherst media coverage. And there's no reason with flyers that we also couldn't do a piece in the Gazette, you know, really trying to get the news out now and then repeat it again in January, so we just wanted to make sure we had dates. But I agree, we're at we're at the 9th of December. So if we want to let people know this is coming, um, and and just so people know, I've got I've now done I did one district meeting with a more complete set. I've been using the videos we've got to take it out to district. <coughs> And I want to continue to do that. And I'm welcoming other people doing that. I've got kind of a, not a written talk, but I've got a, a kind of smooth talk with seven charts, you know, but two of the charts are these videos or three of them. So we're going to be trying to start doing that in January, February as well. So it won't be just the community forum where people can find out about it. Um, I'll oh. put my... And, uh, and Margaret, I just wanted to know, we'll, we'll have, after the cost estimate reconciliation, those giant files will be available. What you're saying will take the extra workers for Danisco to package them in a way that it's possible for us to see them. So you're saying that we should be able to get those by the 11th. To yeah, the whole I mean, to me, it's a translation piece. Again, it's you're going from a highly technical process to something that it is going to make sense as a sort of summary as a summary and it's that piece that can take some time to kind of chew up and prioritize what is going to help people make clear decisions it's the translation piece that could well, yeah if i if i could just also add um wishful hoping thinking that we're going in the right direction. I heard that we're going to have our, our gas prices might might hit below three three dollars a gallon by the end of the year. So I'm I'm going in that direction for all of my uh, optimism. <laughs> um, but um, you know, depending on where we land with the cost of the project. It might also take us a day or two internally with Margaret our estimators, our consultants, to also dig deeper if needed for all other alternative measures um, for alternates um, or substitutions to some of the costs and how we might be able to get those down. So, so it will be very high level. Um, and then all of the important information in detail behind it. But again, just depending on where the numbers come in at, um, Jonathan might um, ha has gone through this pain before as well, that we might need another day or two. If, if all the cards align, we reconcile, we're all in agreement, we have no cost issues, we can issue it sooner. Yep. If we have to start looking at 
other creative ways based on market conditions to provide options for the com committee to make decisions on, then that might take another day or two. So it may look like we have a whole week, but, but we really don't have a whole week. So um, I, I just want to make that clear that our work doesn't stop on Friday the 6th. Yeah, exactly. Um, and Phoebe, one comment, and then I want to, I see Jonathan's hand is up. At the yeah, moment. I see that. Um, so Phoebe, to your question about, you know, could there be a further detailed discussion? Yes, I would say this, this Friday the 20th is an opportunity for an additional meeting if it's desired by the building committee and perhaps we should treat that as a placeholder. So Jonathan, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I'm gonna mostly kind of agree with what Donna just spoke to, um, but but maybe try to give it a little bit more context. Um, you know, the the market has not been a pleasant place the last few years, and, and that's leaving it kind of mildly. It's been it's been very hard <laughs> to manage uh, projects through this. But we need to to you know our design team and their sub consultants understand what our our budget is. Um, and if the numbers start coming in in a place that we all don't like, we're, we're going to have to lean on them pretty heavily to guide us through the series of choices we're going to need to make as a committee in a town to bring the project back into line if it if it isn't there after that reconciliation process. Um, and it's you know it it's it, it's a matter of balancing different needs. Um, and they're going to have to look at the building as a whole system and then kind of look at the sub parts of that and figure out what what can be adjusted, what what items can be changed. Um, and we really want to use their guidance to look at those those series of of options um, as opposed to, you know, looking at at a 60 to 60 page um, estimates uh, and and try to pick out line items because that, that that's not how you get from, a, a, you know, from the market saying you're over your budget to being back into your budget. So Phoebe, your hand is still up or up again? Again, I just had another uh, relatively quick question. So this, I, I'm trying to figure out if you're just letting us know that there's a proposed school committee meeting or if the plan was to potentially present this uh, cost estimate to the school committee on that day. Um, and then before that gets answered, Margaret, briefly, I, I do like the idea of having a placeholder on the 20th. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I am feeling, as you guys can probably tell, pretty strongly that we need to make sure um, that we're, we're really all very much on board to show that strength to the community, especially knowing that, you know, a few short months after this, we're asking our town to um, vote on a very, very substantial, uh, very substantial thing that I think, you know, everybody is very much, uh, most people are very much in support of, and most people are also very concerned about the financial aspect of it. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, that I say that this is uh, a proposed school committee meeting, because I don't think Allison has had a chance to go back. This was, this is based on a conversation I had with Allison, um, but I think, and you'll see that there's another one proposed in the month of February. I do believe that we owe the school committee an update to help, you know, bring them along as supporters of the project. So that's why it's it's proposed. It isn't. <laughs> she's got to actually confirm that with her committee. But, but Margaret, Margaret, I think. So I get that's without cost, right? So so, so the presentation. So this one is just talking about design and schedule. And then they will get a presentation in February, which you will see in just a minute, that is about cost. Okay. Yeah, I think that was the question. They're not going to see cost yes. because we see cost. Okay. Right. Yes, that was the question. Oh, okay. Got it. I <laughs> Thank you. That one totally went past me. All right. So let's talk about February. Um, and I also just want to say, remembering back to why we were recommending that we move this all to March, try to imagine if we were doing this all now, like that, that was the reason for sort of, you know, going to this um, March 2nd submission. So now 
the numbers are out there. People are sort of chewing on them. Um, this is this is where on the tenth we are proposing to bring you the entire schematic design package. So like the packages you saw before, the cost is, is a component. It's a very big component of this one, but there are other documents. There are the final, uh, the, the schematic design drawings, um, the specifications. <laughs> there's, there's quite a lot of other stuff. So that is the date that we're proposing to bring you this for discussion. This would be the latest date for posting that material. Um, the following uh, Valentine's Day, <laughs> um, there. This would be the date that the school committee would get an update on all of this. The seventeenth would be the date that you all would vote if you were in agreement to authorize the submission of the uh, schematic design to the MSBA. The following week is school vacation. And then the week after that, March 2nd, that is the deadline for the submission of this document to the MSBA. Any questions about all of that? So, so Margaret, just on up, um, this time around, we get this giant document. We get to see it, ask questions about it, make potentially any wording or what other changes 10th we see it again on the 17th and it looks like Donesco has some time unless they're all going away that vacation week <laughs> uh, well I'm make... sure some of them are <laughs> I know I, I, I but but what I'm saying is that they can they've got enough time to make sure we make that deadline and do you ever submit earlier is what I was going to say to to the extent that MSBA, yeah. the MSBA team in the past has come back with some qu clarifying questions and stuff. And I, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we built in whatever, I'll call it the bureaucratic time or, or the, the mm -hmm. time that's amazed me that is time consuming, um, just interacting with questions so that, but that's, that's right. You, you're right. I mean, there's enough of a cushion here that we can do the final tweaks as needed and responding to any staff questions, correct? Right, so let me make two comments about that. So the thing that isn't on here is typically the uh, uh, MSBA vote, a board meeting is the day before a submission date, right? So in terms of what the staff are doing, <laughs> This is actually a board meeting date and everybody's like full at the MSBA is full tilt towards the board meeting. So we can submit earlier and there's no reason that we won't, but I will tell you, they will not look at it until the second because that is when their staff is free to look. And okay. just like the previous, the previous submissions, the first thing they do is they go through and do a check that it's complete. And so they say, where is this? Where's that? Can you point us to that? They're, they have a checklist they go through. And that is their first internal step. And I would expect that would happen again. They'll come back with a couple of, can you show, point us where this is or where that is? And that will happen regardless. It just, I don't think we'll, they will not turn to it until March 2nd, no matter what we do. Okay, and thank you. Kathy, and just, just to add to that, um, you know, saw how long it's taken to get review comments back from the other two yeah. submissions. I expect this one to maybe even be a little bit longer, um, yeah. just just because of the amount of information they have to digest. But also, this is going to be part of your funding agreement, right? So yeah. um, they they want to make sure that they've looked at everything. <clears throat> but um, I, I think they're also probably going to get a very large number of submissions here because I think the December 28th date would have been really hard for most communities to meet. Yeah, probably. So it really will become a matter of staff availability and all of that. Um, but yeah. the, uh, the other component, maybe to your point, Kathy, looking beyond February, right, in anticipation of the vote is it april 26th it's mid, well the 
MSBA vote is April 26th. April 26th. And then the town, the debt exclusion vote is May 2nd. Yeah, so looking forward to MSBA's approval of this sometime, probably early April, um, we will have a meeting with MSBA, maybe, maybe April 15th or something, I'm pulling a date out, but um, meeting with them, with the town to go through what they're going to agree to as far as their reimbursement for the project. So they do kind of a budget review meeting uh, with the town. It would be you, Kathy, uh, I would assume Paul, um, Mike Morris, maybe a couple of others just to say, okay, just so everyone understands, this is our interpretation of what we're going to reimburse the town for. So there'll be a couple of conversations with them directly, almost independent of their review of the submission. Right. And I think uh, Paul maybe went through that the last time. Or Sean. Sean, I'm guessing. So you've given us January and February. You'll come back um, at the beginning of January with what March, March, April, May look like. Yep. Okay, because it looks like the big item will be off our desk in terms of what we need to do, and then we're in this waiting period. Um, but other than trying to get the word out, so I did have, I have one question, um, Tim. I forgot to ask on the the details and the costs on the outdoor. The same way we asked about furniture. The outdoor site in terms of playground equipment, we also have that piece of, I'll call it rubber, but we have an all weather piece between two of the playgrounds and two questions. One, is that like what we have in Kendrick Park or Groff Park, just a, a rubber surface? And I think you said that's expense, expensive as opposed to grass or dirt. Um, so yes. will, we get, will we get, is it PFAS free? This has been an issue. But the second is, will we know what that cost has added to our budget on, on overall on the outside? You know, where we've got some things on our, do we really want to do that? Is this a place to cut? And I don't know what kind of money we're talking about on any of this. So I'm not yeah. rounding down to the $10,000 $10, level anymore, you know? <laughs> It, so, it is not artificial turf. It is the same material that is, I, I, I'm not familiar with the parks that you're referencing, but I assume it's the same. It, it's a granulated rubber adhered uh, surface. Um, and there will be a line item for it in the cost estimate. So I, I can't give you a cost right now, but you will be able to see what it adds. And it is more expensive than if we were just to do grass, which I believe was a question that was asked last time. And, and Kathy, I just want to point out, you mentioned playground equipment. Um, we will just have a budget number for the playground equipment. Um, we will not have costs on, an, on uh, the equipment. So that too starts to occur to talk about what, what, a, what the playgrounds start to look like afterwards. But based on what we know of today's market and what's required for you know, 575 kids, two grade levels, et cetera. We, we believe that we're providing an appropriate allowance for that. So I see Mike's hand is up and then Sean also. I can, I can I'll remember mine. Sean can go first. Mine's more of a, uh, just a heads up. I have to leave in a few minutes. So if you see me drop off, that's uh, that's why. And, and we do have one invoice, but I'm sure Margaret can bring it up uh, for approval. Yeah. So. Mike. Sure. So, you know, not to belabor the point, but I think given all the conversation about cost estimating and what we has, it might be helpful if someone can do in a nutshell what happens after. I mean, you, I think a number of people have touched on it, but what that process and how long that process is when you're making decisions about, uh, I know one likes the term value engineering, people can use a different term and, and, and I get that. Um, but it might be helpful for the committee to know that it's not like the cost estimate comes back and it's done, that it's still a dynamic discussion point. I think there was a number of people touched on it, but I, you know, just, I wonder if either Margaret or some of the Danisco folks can describe at a high level, 
sort of what that looks like over the next, you know, you, you showed the map with design development and all that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. What does that look like so that people, it might help people feel a little calmer if they knew the process that followed that. You know what, that Mike, that's a great point. So let me just pull that back up and talk about it because you're right. Um, the What I didn't say in presenting this overall schedule is that there are estimate updates that are related to these steps. So it isn't like you do an estimate and then, you know, uh, what is this, a year and a half later, you bid it and cross your fingers. At each step here, there is an estimate update. And I think that's your, your point, Mike. The funding agreement gets signed, just to go to this one. So the funding agreement with the MSBA gets signed in here, which is why this, as we've all said before, this getting the schematic design number right and having some contingency embedded in it is really important because once you've signed the funding agreement, the MSBA will not provide additional funding beyond that funding agreement. But we have the opportunity at these other points to look again at, at what the cost of the project and to make adjustments along the way. And that is a frequent occurrence. Mike, that I think is what you wanted to everybody to hear, right? Good point. So I'm, I'm, are there any other questions on either schedule? Because um, this is, we're not going to see each other again until after the new year. <laughs> uh, uh, well, we won't see Very all fun. of you. There's some other, some of you I will see frequently before then. But um, so we have, we have one invoice and then I want to, and then I want to open it up for public comments. So, uh, Margaret, I think you can pull the invoice yes, up. Yes, I can. Okay, so the invoice is from Denisco, and uh, with gratitude for their hard work. So, um, again, I've I've highlighted because there's a lot of stuff on this page what it is they're asking for. So, they're they are now billing on the schematic design line. Um, they are billing for their work because there's some also some consultant work on following pages 33333, three, 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 the number you've seen before. There is $100,000 left in their fee. That will get fully billed out by the time um, we're at the debt exclusion vote. Okay. So um, they, their consultants um, are also billing a bit this month. So there is some survey work. I think this was around sort of getting the wetland boundaries set, um, traffic engineering services. And so in total, this is the total number of the bill for this month, which is there, there are 33333 plus the consultant number for a total of 64,652. So does someone, anyone have any questions? Want to make a motion? Um, I move to accept, the, approve the invoice as presented. Is there a second? All second. That's Jonathan. And uh, I need, if you pull the screen down, Margaret, I can yeah. more easily see people to call on them. That's great. Um, are there any questions on this? Um, I guess the only question I have, um, I, I know you are have done work on wetlands and there's some more work to do. Is Does all of that work get done before we submit to MSBA? Is it, will we see this again as we go before CONCOM, you know, to get like we're, we're or, or does the CONCOM come later on? So it's a sort of a, is there work done yet or, and do we still have enough budget for them to do the rest of it? <laughs> Uh, are, are you saying Denisco's or? No, no, your, your subcontractor that's out there, yeah, yeah. out there doing the data <laughs> designation during the wetland, you. You know, whatever is needed for that going to, to yeah. Yes, so, um, I almost said Thornton Tomasetti. Uh, <laughs> Whitley so Horse. It's, it's, this, it's Horse not spelled Whitley. right, but this is the wetlands yeah. line yeah. here. What, so this is what's yeah. remaining to build. But there isn't. So so back to Kathy's comment. Um, what we found out was that 
the original survey uh, or wetland delineation that was done several years ago did not include what, what's called delineation sheets uh, to support some of the um, wetland boundaries. So with that said, and speaking with Aaron Jock, it was agreed that they would go out and they would do a couple of more or they would they would do some delineation sheets, not at the really deep level that would normally have accompanied that report, but uh, for the areas that we will be approaching. So yes, Kathy, I need that cost from Horsley Witten now that we know the direction based on our conversation with Aaron. So there will be some added costs not included in, in what's being shown right now. But I don't think it's a lot. It might be like three, three or four thousand dollars. And then that will get us to what is already included, as Margaret just showed, was was the ANRAD. So this, so for this, we'll need just a little bit more money, um, and then we'll be able to submit our ANRAD. And okay. and just what we didn't mention to everyone is uh, first, I, I really just want to say we appreciate everyone's enthusiasm throughout the town um, about this project, and Erin just could not be more excited about how we're really going to make an improvement to the site. And, and it really is an amazing town resource. Um, that said, great to work with, super accommodating, gets it, not looking for the town to spend any more money than absolutely needed. But uh, we will be submitting the ANRAD uh, in January, I think the ANRAD date, Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, it was it January 11th we were going to submit it? Or... I that's correct, yes. That was what Amy was targeting. Okay. Yeah, uh, January 25th uh, Con Conservation Commission hearing. Okay. I, it was just a... Yeah, I didn't mean to get into that, but that reminded me, Margaret, we might want to put that on the schedule as well. Uh, we will need yeah, a point. we will need a, a project representative uh, to appear. So <laughs> that would be great. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, so we will be submitting the uh, package to the Conservation Commission. Uh, I think the deadline is uh, somewhere around. January 11th. I so, know uh, that's not right, but it's supposed to be three weeks in advance around uh, the first of the year. Sorry to take the time around an invoice, but um, no, that's okay. But yes, there, there, we, we have a little bit more coming, and and it's my understanding, Margaret, that there is uh, funds available within yeah. within the allocated amount now. So I am. I think we're proceeding to a vote. So I'm going to call out names as I see them on my screen, Rupert. I vote yes. Ben? Also yes. Tammy? Yes. Mike? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Paul? Yes. Simone? Yes. Alicia? Yes. Phoebe? Yes. And Kathy is a yes. Um, so it's unanimous with two absent. Uh, Shona's had to leave us, Margaret and yep. and Allison. So, any other questions, comments before I open it up to public comments? I'm not seeing any. Um, all right, so we are now open for public comments, and I see one hand up. And I'm going to, I guess the four hands are up. Okay, I am, um, Bruce, if you unmute, I've allowed you to talk. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, um, well, uh, uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, Tim, Kathy, Vivian, um, Donna, the, uh, Richard, the continuation of uh, safeguarding and, uh, and honoring the amount of daylight that's coming into the classrooms and the image there that I got a screen capture of so that I can show 
my children and my friends, I think will make everybody very happy. And I think the way in which you achieve that 22 by strategically pruning other parts of the building where daylight is typically easy to put in, but is less necessary was uh, well, 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 was well thought out and sound. So I continue to applaud the way you're going about that. Um, I've read through the bulk of the narrative systems narrative, and I do have some comments for that and questions. They're fairly minor, or uh, and so I'll handle that by email, uh, which I send to Kathy, and I think she sends them on as she judges uh, appropriate. And finally, um, I recognise that the uh, conversations around uh, uh, zero net energy building uh, performance and so forth which was the subject of a, of a committee deliberations, hopefully will continue. I recognize that with the cost estimate and the reconciliation and the submission, that that's probably not likely to happen until uh, later in the spring. And I think that's fine. Uh, I should say that uh, uh, through mutual friends, uh, I've been uh, talking or at least communicating with uh, architectural teams for some of the, uh, the successful um, exemplary uh, zero net energy performance schools in Virginia. Um, and uh, there's some very interesting commentary and feedback um, relative to what we're doing. Um, uh, particularly, well, I, 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 I've sent this on to Kathy. She may share it or she may share it when she thinks it's appropriate. But this uh, group in Virginia, this architectural practice is uh, uh, have multiple principles there have been very willing to engage in very uh, specific technical conversations with me. And I hope to uh, be able to leverage that productively and positively for the benefit of this project. Um, so I would like for the uh, zero net energy uh, conversations to continue so that I can uh, feed that uh, into a, a more specific portal than I think uh, the whole of the committee at this point. So I won't uh, say any more on that other than that I'm, uh, and I should, I guess I will say that this, uh, I started this because I was interested in understanding the uh, plug loads and how they are managed in these uh, achieving uh, schools, because there's a lot of user behavior associated with that. And that's an unknown in many cases, but I've uh, gleaned a lot more uh, I think of use. So uh, that effort, I think, will probably uh, continue. And and and, uh, but thank you for all you're doing. Uh, it's very encouraging, and uh, I applaud the results so far. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Um, let's see. Rudy, I think I allowed you to talk. If you unmute. Did you just call on me, Kathy? I'm, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're, okay, great. We can hear you. Yep. Um, let me start my video. So, um, I a couple of things overall. I wonder if it'd be possible to post that larger file broken into uh, segments. I couldn't get uh, a download of that without Google warning me that I couldn't do. They would could wouldn't be able to do a virus check. The file was so large and or perhaps it could be hard copy could be made available in the library. Um, so that's a request just so we can, everybody can review all the documents that you posted. Um, I'm a little surprised last time, I thought we were gonna have uh, an agenda item on the CPA application at this meeting. Maybe I missed a meeting where we, oh, it, yeah, it, it, the last time uh, Kathy had proposed delaying that discussion until the subsequent meeting. I am disappointed if this was the only opportunity uh, that that's not on the agenda. And I'm a bit surprised by the committee's reticence to um, advocate for that proposal given our worries about cost when that's an opportunity to possibly uh, get an additional source of funding for the project. Um, I do like uh, Bruce have a number of, I did a quick review of the narrative and have a number of points. Maybe like Bruce, it'd be better to send you some uh, detailed questions, but a couple of ones that jumped out were uh, the sub slab insulation being reduced to a two foot wide perimeter 
Um, I'm just, I'm glad you're going to revisit that question or keeping the option open to up, up the level of subslab insulation. I also noticed that um, the foam insulation varies throughout the, the different rooms and I couldn't, I couldn't in the walls and I couldn't figure out why that would be. And I want, I didn't see offhand if there was going to be insulation in the elevator shaft. So I wonder if uh, maybe I just missed it, but maybe that's something to look at too for if you haven't already. Um, and then just a small point about the corridor and cafeteria floors being sheet marmoleum instead of tiles. I thought in the discussion at the um, design that several people raised from the school department as well as some of the members of the public that um, tiles are much more easy to repair and maintain. And I, I wondered if there was a reason for the sheet marmoleum and some, some of the spaces. Um, so anyway, let me, oh, and finally the energy specs on equipment. Um, I didn't see any, there was some energy star mention in some of the appliances, but I didn't see energy star energy specifications for particularly a lot of the kitchen equipment. And I think maybe that needs to be revisited um, in call outs. I just looked like there was manufacturers, but um, I think that's a place we have to be looking at our big equipment uh, for energy savings. Anyway, I'll try to send the rest by by email to the committee, but um, thanks a lot. Thank you, Rudy. Uh, Maria, I, if you unmute, you're, you've been allowed to talk. Thank you. I wanna talk about the scheduling that you have engaged in and are proposing moving forward. This is once again doing uh, something that's very problematic where you're giving the committee two days lead time to review a very large and very complex document that is extremely, it's critical to, to this project. Um, and it's giving the public less than 24 hours and to, to be able to digest this and offer you input. It's impossible. And like, um, <clears throat> Rudy, I was not able to open this file. Um, I am, you need feedback on this basis of design. And I'm hoping that members of the elementary school building committee will review this in detail and provide input. I am hopeful that the public will provide input once they've gotten a chance to do this. And I would really like to encourage you strenuously to schedule, to add your meeting back in for next Friday so that you can discuss the input on this. And even if you have to send something preliminary today to the cost estimators, you can send an amended report after thoroughly discussing this and doing due diligence at this time. You know, in the, the this committee, has actually talked about getting a grid to look at uh, for the different choices that you have to make in materials and so on about sustainability, safety, cost. To my knowledge, that has never been done. And yet you're going out, you've written, you've got a basis of design that's going out without that discussion. In terms of your January schedule, this is once again a problem because you're again leaving yourselves no time to review this document. If you received the, the, the reconciled cost estimate two days before you're gonna discuss it and a day after this has been presented to the school committee meeting, that's not enough time. I would encourage you strongly to push back those meetings, the school committee and the community forum until you have a chance to properly digest the information that you are going to receive from the cost estimators or ask them to get that back to you earlier so you have time to do this. Um, again, for the submission on March 2nd, it seems to me that why would you schedule a meeting of the school building committee to authorize this, then have a week of vacation and this does not have to go in till the week after. Give yourselves time, schedule a meeting. It doesn't have to be on a Friday, you have to be flexible. Perhaps you should schedule a meeting the week of February 27th 
if you need to submit this on the second, maybe schedule a meeting so that you can authorize it closer to that time so you guys have time to do your work. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Tony, you are with us. Hello, thank you. This is Tony Cunningham. I haven't had a chance yet to review the basis of design, so I don't have comments to offer on the detail at this time. I do have three questions I would like to ask of the committee and Danisco. The first is, can you please share what is the total square footage of the area that will be improved for playing fields in the north of the site? Second, is the rubber surface detailed in the basis of design for the playgrounds guaranteed to be free of PFAS? And if not, what safer alternate materials can be included in the basis of design that will be sent to the cost estimators? And lastly, what is the target budget for the project at this point? What is the not to exceed number? Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Are there any final, um, I've written down those and I do ask people um, to send any detailed comments. I can see whether it's possible to post it, Tim, in segments, in chapters um, or not. It would make it, it certainly would make it easier for everyone to read if it wasn't one document, but that's up to you. Uh, we can certainly do that. So are there any other comments or suggestions of the schedule? As you saw what Margaret put up, these were, um, we were bringing you these dates um, and we will, uh, we, we, we do agenda setting in between meetings to try to figure out what else there's to be done. Um, so if people have questions or suggestions about the schedule, I think it would be fine to Go ahead and send them in um, and connect with us about that. I'm just looking around the screen. I don't see. So I'm not seeing any and I'm not seeing any hands up. Um, right now, we are not scheduled for another meeting until January, and we will be double checking on the various community forums. Nothing has been set up yet, um, including discussing with the school committee. And I just wanted to make it clear, I think we had in response to Phoebe's, if that school committee meeting happens, it's not going to be with cost estimates. It's just going to be the the pictures we've seen of design that no one else has seen up into this point. So it's a preview of the super exciting part before we have to figure out how to pay for it. Um, so anything else from anyone in the committee? I don't see anything. Then I think we are adjourned at 1023. And we will be back to you as we finalize this. And I also want to... Um, double check um, right now tentatively all of those meetings would start at 8 30 in the morning I want to make sure that works for people because it's it seems to be a a good time and it allows us the flexibility to go longer if we need to on a couple of these meetings so thank you everybody everyone very much and have a good rest of your day